And now, ladies and gentlemen, time to bring in the champion, the big cheese, Ted Cheeseman. So I just got to Belvedere. I'm interviewing my next guest. Uh, I've only interviewed a few people this year due to the COVID-19 uh, scenario and also lockdown. I'm interviewing a, a current pro boxer. In actual fact, he's fighting in a few weeks time. On the 1st of August, I, I believe against Sam Eggleton. He was a super welterweight British champion uh, last year. A guy called Ted Cheeseman. Um, he's a forward, for, uh, come forward fighter like a Mexican type fighter, you know, very, very fit, very, very uh, tough. And um, part of my podcast, as I've explained multiple times, isn't just to talk about the actual sport, but it's to talk about the, the mindset and, and the will to win and, and what it takes. And obviously all the hard work, dedication, preparation they need to put into the, their bo boxing camps or, uh, or, or into, um, you know, into, into their nutrition, into their regime. and. You know, what it takes to become, you know, someone who's a good fighter to an elite fighter. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to getting this one done. It's been a long time coming. Right, I'm here with uh, Ted Cheeseman, my, ne my next guest. Uh, thank you for welcoming me yeah. into your home. And um, I'm actually really humbled because I know in the next couple of weeks you're going to be fighting probably one of the biggest or the biggest fight that you, you've probably, probably yeah. had so far. Um, as I mentioned to you before we start recording, part of my podcast is yeah, talk about your sport, talk about you know you know the ups and downs of the sport and obviously what it takes. But part of my goal from my podcast is to give inspiration to a younger demographic who are coming through school, maybe a bit of a lost soul, don't know whether they want to go into business, work for someone, become an athlete. So hopefully, when I interview people, it it brings out that that content which may inspire that one person to think, yeah. you know what, I could follow that person's footsteps. Yeah. And you're someone that I've, I've watched. I'm a big boxing fan. I've done a bit of boxing myself. Yeah. And even this, even though we haven't had a conversation up until this point, I've kind of got to know your character because even the way you fight, the way yeah. you come forward. And I thought, you know what, you've got this, you know, do whatever it takes to win. And, yeah. and that's why I wanted to get you on the podcast. So thank yeah. you for your time and thank yeah. you for welcoming me in your home, Ted. No problem. Man. So where shall I begin? Um, I know you're still fairly young, like yeah. 1995, you're, yeah, you know, you were born. Yeah, you make me sound old, man. I'm 34 <laughs> years of age. Yeah. When when I when I talk about myself, I still feel like I'm in my twenties, but yeah. I'm I'm not. Um, so how come how come you got into boxing? Why did you choose this career? Because it's a bloody tough sport. Yeah, um, do you know what? I I love football. Do you know what I mean? Before um, I started boxing, I started boxing at the age of 12. And what was um, I played for a football team called Leighton Square Adventure um, Playground, but it's Leighton Square FC um, in Peckham. Right and. Um, I was captain of the team. We won the won the like the Bexley League um, and the cup and everything. But then in the pre-season when we come back, um, only six of us come back. I went and played for a team at Oxford and Bermondsey. Um, had a couple of games and it just weren't the same. And during that time, one of my mates' uh, mums asked me to come down the gym with uh, her son on a, on a Wednesday. And then like cause that was the beginners' day. And after a couple of Wednesdays. Um, my coach said to me, like, look, you can start coming every day if you want. And then I did from then. And then about five and a half, six months later, I got a medical card. And uh, from then, I never looked back. Do you know what I mean? I, get, I forgot about all the football, really. I played a bit in my school. I went to London Nautical School and it was like a sports academy. And I was always sort of in the school team. But I sort of lost the love for it because I was fully in love with the boxing and the passion and the... Uh, the good f feeling of that whatever you put in is what you get out. And um, well, I weren't really playing football outside of the school, I didn't really care. And I just went on from there. And from then, I've, uh, 12 years later, I'm still boxing. Yeah. Um, I know boxing, like I was about to say, like boxing and football, they seem to sort of lap over. I know they're completely yeah. different sports, yeah. but the, the, the crowd or the fans, they seem to like, there's a synergy between them, yeah. and obviously you see like big big boxers go and fight at their favourite uh, football, football team. Round, yeah. uh, the first, I don't know why this one springs to mind, but Tony Bellew when he won his uh, when he won his uh, world world title, yeah. he done it at Everton. I, I think yeah. I'm right. Um, why why do you think that happens? Why do you think out of these two sports they cross over so much? 
Um, I think it's like it's weird if you're if you're say from London and you support Man United. It ain't really going to be a thing that all the Man United people are going to get behind you, and that you're going to want to fight in their stadium. <laughs> but obviously, he's like Tony Bellew, he's um, Everton. He's from Liverpool. It's near Everton, so they've supported most of their support. Supported him in his career. Plus, when he started getting good, everyone's going, "Oh, he's an Everton boy." So all the Everton fans got behind him, and it's a great thing to be able to sell out your like local club plus yeah. the team you follow um, stadium, and it's it's. It's a good business, it's good business wise as well. Yeah, because um, I remember when one of my favourite fighters is now retired, is George Groves. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned to you before, I used to sponsor Sam Webb. Yeah. Uh, then I sponsored Bradley Skeet because I got to know him. He was yeah. in the same stable. Brad's become a bit of a friend of mine. I've interviewed yeah. him on my podcast. Lovely, lovely guy. And I yeah. remember going to watch him and Sam go down the old Haymaker gym. Yeah. And I watched them spar George Groves. Yeah. And I thought George Groves, like, obviously was, you know, world champion, amazing. Yeah. And I remember seeing all these shorts used to have the Chelsea sign on yeah. it. And it, it was that, at that point, I was thinking, you don't get it in Formula One, like, they have, I don't know, like a badge of a rugby team yeah. or a snooker player has this. But yeah. it seems to be there's a crossover and it's, it's quite nice to see that. Yeah. I think it's just, obviously, we're crowded sports and, all, like, it's sort of that following, a similar following, like it's a day out, it's a night out, it's that sort of following that goes to football games, is a similar following that goes to boxing matches, it ain't the sort of similar background that goes to a Formula One, like you say, or a yeah. snooker or a darts, even though darts now is sort of getting sort of similar to um, boxing and football, but it still just ain't the same, it's, it's, it's a weird thing I think, but Obviously, it's good, and if if you're a fighter and you obviously reach that pinnacle where you can fight in team you followed uh, stadium, it's a really good uh, achievement, and obviously you're gonna have a lot of support. So it's a, it's gonna be in your favour if you're fighting a another opponent. Or. Yeah. So as far as you're concerned, when you when you let's say football or even boxing, would yeah. you say you're quite natural? Or you had to work really hard at it. What type of person do you think you are? Um, it's a bit of both. Like obviously, I picked it up really quick, yeah. And I think what a lot of people don't look at is um, that they think I'm just this brawler who comes forward. I like to fight, yeah. I do love to fight, but if you if you've worked with me in the gym, or if if you're a boxer who knows me from being in the gym with me and stuff, you'll know that I'm very technically and I've got a really good boxing brain. If I if I want to use it, you know what I mean and Obviously, I've showed in a couple of fights I can use it, but it's just that it's habits. It's mm. like habits, what you're used to. I, I won two or three of my national titles, I won, or m maybe even more, um, simply on the back foot boxing, mm. um, spinning off of left hook, like, like jabbing, moving, moving at my feet, turning southpaw, turning orthodox, like switch it in. But it's just, I think, no matter what, I think as a fighter, um, as you say, I think you've got to do whatever you can possible to be able to win the fight. So if he's coming forward, you've got to come forward if he's boxing, if he's a bit of both. Yeah. But it's, that's, I think that's a really good trait to have as a fighter, to be able to adapt to your opponent. Yeah. Uh, I'm not just saying this because you're here, but <clears throat> before the Scott fight, yeah. I saw you as that Mexican come yeah, yeah, forward yeah. kind of fighter. Yeah. And you're always interesting to watch because no matter whether you're winning or losing the fight, yeah. you know that you're still game, you're yeah, still going to go yeah. forward. But when you changed your, wasn't so much style, but just your tactics yeah. with Scott, and I totally believe you won that fight. Yeah. I swear, yeah. well, my family's life, I believe you won that fight. Yeah. I thought at that moment, it, 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 yeah, you, you're like, you have an IQ, which I didn't actually knew or believe that you might have yeah. had up until that fight. Yeah, cool. And I feel just going, coming off of boxing slightly, in business or anything that you do in life, I think that you have to have that. When times yeah. get tough, yeah. you need to know how to pivot and change yeah. your approach. How, how important do you think that is? Yeah, a million percent. It's, it's, it's the mental game, it's the mental side of it. And like, obviously, if you're in the right mental state, you've always, as a fight, you always will be able to do it. It's, it's about, if you're not in the mental state, your tunnel vision is just one thing. There's no plan A. Like no, there's no plan A, let alone plan B. You know what I mean? You're just you're in there, and I think if your head's there, if, and if my head's there, I know as long as I'm fit and my head's there, 
I know there's not that many people who can beat me if if I'm focused, I'm fit, and, and my head's there. I, I know that, and because I know I can box it. I've got a good chin. I can box. I can fight. Um, I've got a lot of heart. I'm fit. You know what I mean? I've got a good engine. Is that I've got most traits you need to like that you need to go all the way. Do you know what I mean? I'm determined. It's just making it all click together now. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I I had a really good run. Had a bad spell. But like I said, the mental side weren't there at the time. And now I'm in the best mental shape I've been in my whole pro career, I'd say. So, and the best physical shape right now that I've been in my whole pro career. And I'm just really excited now to be ready. It's only two and a half weeks away to fight. And I'm, I'm, if someone says to me, fight tomorrow, I'm there, I'm ready. And a lot of times, if you said to me, fight tomorrow, I think, bloody hell, pff, am I going to be able to make the weight? I could do with another couple of weeks. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things, but I'm on it. Do you know what I mean? Like, like the lockdown is probably the biggest favour that's ever happened to me. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like just wiped out everything and my only um, focus is, has been boxing and family. Do you know what I mean? There's no distractions at all. Yeah. There's no nothing. And a lot of people say, ah, oh, it's been rubbish, it's been boring, it's been this. But it makes you be able to be tunnel visioned and be able to focus on what you want to focus on. Yeah. And it's give you a period of time, like with anything, you need to transition. If you've been used to doing stuff a certain way for so long, um, it's hard to change. But then all of a sudden, if like now we've had three months of being, there's nothing really to do, it becomes normal again. It's like you, you've had a period of time where, so the stuff you are focusing on, you can not get sidetracked at all yeah. because it's easier now because you ain't been sidetracked for so long so it's easy to stay on that um, route yeah, so yeah. And that's why now I honestly can say if someone says to me now and says oh, like, uh, if you win lose whatever I know myself there's no stone left unturned do you know what I mean mm. I, I, I've trained as hard as I possibly can I've dieted really well I've um, been boxing and working on stuff really well I've been, it's, it's been a long period of time where I've actually, like for the last year obviously now, I've been thinking about boxing a lot more outside of the gym, do you know what I mean? And, and now, I believe when I'm in the gym and I'm working on stuff, if something don't work or it does work and, or it only works once out of five tries or something, I would then go and think about it for the next two nights or whatever until I get my opportunity to try that again and then try and make it right again. And if it don't work that time, then I'll still be, it still be in my head, thinking, mm. thinking, thinking. When before, there was no focus on boxing. I didn't care about boxing, do you know what I mean? It was, I'm talented, I, I'm trained hard. It's almost like a bit like a job. So like you yeah. do the job, and then when you come away from it, then yeah. you forget about and it. And someone to speak to me, and I think, oh, please drop me out, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to talk about boxing. And then I say to other people, oh, I don't, you don't really like talking about boxing. And I say, well, you go to work all week, yeah? So when you come home from work, do you want to talk about your work all day? Yeah. But the difference is, when you get like that, you shouldn't be in the sport. And it's, it's not that you shouldn't be in the sport, you need to change your head to get it right. <clears throat> and now I've finally got my head right where I've got the love back for the sport. I'm thinking about the sport all the time. I, I'm studying the sport again. I, I'm looking at what's going on. And before I didn't care, I, I, I weren't too bothered. As, as long as I was on the right road and as long as I'm doing my training, what I needed to do, whether I was doing my run when I should have been doing my run at half six, so then I had a couple of hours to relax before I went to bed and my adrenaline weren't pumping, so I weren't um, in bed at 10 and not getting to sleep till 12, one. I was going running at nine, half nine, getting back at 10. By the time I've had a bath and stuff, it'd be half 10, 11. By the time I get in bed, I won't get asleep till half one. Then I'm up again in the morning to train. Like it's it's little things like that people don't realise. Is even eating at the right times. I like coming back from training really late, getting in, thinking, ah, oh, should I eat? Should I not? Oh, but I've got to eat, which you got. But you shouldn't be eating at ten, half ten at night when you're dieting constantly to try and make weight. Do you know what I mean? You everything is times. Do you know what I mean? And, like you say, like even when we was t I was talking to you about the, um, coming over to do the interview, yeah, like I was so iffy, and because before I'd just be like bang over, 
But now, everything's, like for me, it's like, obviously having an addictive personality, my addiction's moved again, obviously. As an addictive personality, I feel no matter what I do, I go all the way, do you know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm actually found my addiction in something, it goes all the way. And for years it was like that in boxing as an amateur and whatever. When I went pro, obviously you get sidetracked, it changed. And as much as I was resentful in my training, do you know what I mean? Because as much as I love the sport, I started to hate it. When you think stuff ain't going your way, you start hating the sport. But then since I've got my head right, mentally right, I'm back addicted, do you know what I mean? I'm getting two massages, sometimes three massages a week. Before, I'd struggle to get one in because I'd be thinking, oh, I, don't, I ain't got time really to do that. I want to be doing this and I want to be in the bookies. I want to be like, do you know what I mean? There's so much others I want to try in here. I can chase a few quid here. Do you know what I mean? When my income and my, my main goal should be fulfilling my potential with boxing. And like, I've said it on a few interviews, like, my goals changed, obviously, look, I'm a young kid who come from Burmsy, never had much coming up. Uh, I, I had enough, I, I got through, I managed to get through. But my goal, when I turned pro at 19 years old, you've ain't had thousands, you've sort of got by, I never had a job before, do you know mm. what I mean? Um, then all of a sudden you turn pro, you're getting sponsorships, you're getting fights per money, um, you're fighting sometimes, like when even when I first turned pro, I thought, in like September and then fought in October, so I've had two like decent good paydays in two months. Like what some um, eighteen year olds, some twenty five year olds wouldn't earn in a whole year. Do you know what I mean? I've had in a matter of two months like sponsorships and fight guys, and I'm thinking, bloody hell, this is lovely. Then you go from being twelve years old, being winning national titles, thinking about Olympics. But I think a lot of people lie unless their dad and uh, brothers and all that have boxed. When you first start boxing, you start, you, your ambition ain't to be Olympic champion. You always think of watching big fighters on the TV like Ricky Atta and Mayova, and you think, I want to be world champion. Do you know what I mean? And my ambition was always to become world champion. But as soon as I turned pro, I'd say a year in, a year and a half in, probably my goal changed, and I mean, the post changed. And, all my goal was was to um, become rich, have big asses, have big cars, have big watches, have the best clothes. Mm-hmm. That, do you know what I mean? And that's what, when I started my addiction with the gambling, that's what sort of forced that. Because what people don't realise is, as much as you lose a lot gambling, when you're winning, it's the quickest sense of income. Do you know what I mean? This is, you can't walk in a job, your normal job, come in where one day at 10 in the morning, leave at one o'clock and, and one 15, 10, 10, 15 grand. I mean, you can't do that. But with gambling, you can. You can. So all yeah. of a sudden, you're sort of, you're pulled in. And then when you've got an addictive personality, like, it's weird, because I was talking about in another interview the other day, like, if you went in schools now, yeah, and you started speaking to schools, and you sort of done a questionnaire, you would know someone who's got an addictive personality by their traits, do you know what I mean? Like, Definitely. When I was, say, eight, nine years old, be that got down dim church, my nana grand and that, I played a 2P machine. Every time I bag one out, I'd run back to my nana grand and oh, you got some change for me so I can change it up to go, 2P machine, 2P machine. But you can't win nothing, you might win a toy or nothing. But it was just that addiction of doing it, the chase, yeah. the chase, the chase. And uh, when I boxed as a kid, I didn't really care about school at all. I just wanted to be out in the morning, be able to go running, then go to the gym, train. Hmm. Um, made sure all my weight had to be perfect. Do you know what I mean? Everything had to be. Do you know what I mean? And it's mad that if I look back now and look at my traits, there was always a thing gonna be that I would have an addiction. If I if I knew that that by looking at the traits that I, I and had the knowledge I had now, I could have tried to prevent it before I cured it. Do you know what I mean? If hmm. you get what I'm saying. So it's it's a weird thing. Like I, I look at it and it's mad. But obviously. Everything has a story. Listen, uh, if we go, I went back to February 2019, I never thought I'd be sitting there, uh, top of the bill with the first fight camp um, show of the COVID-19, fighting for the IBF international title, um, hopefully winning and taking um, Sam Egerton's number five ranking with the uh, IBF, which then opens massive doors for the end of the year and the start of next year. And I believe... 
everything has a story, do you know what I mean? And it, it's, it's always how your story ends, not the start or the middle, it's how it ends. And right now, I'm still in the middle and halfway through it, I, it's nowhere near the end. So I'm just looking forward to hopefully, like I was speaking to John Ryder in my gym, who was unlucky, I think, against Callum Smith, and should be world that. champion, yeah. I think he won that. But he, he turned 32, I think, this weekend. And I was looking at him, I was thinking, bloody hell, I'm 24. It'd be mad to think that I was still boxing in like eight years. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's like I've been pro since 19, so I've already been pro like five, nearly six years. So it'd be mad to still be boxing then. But he's doing it. It's like, it's a crazy thing. You don't know, like, he's had his ups and downs. He, he got stopped by Nick Blackwell, beat by Rocky Fielding, beat by Jack Armfield. But now he's like, um, he just fought for a world title wave on 41 plus he's in the running for the Canelo fight mm. so you just don't know uh, and I've been in the gym when people have said ah oh, I think John should um, retire I think John should just leave it and like if he did give up and did leave it and lost the passion where would his story have finished but now we don't know where his story is going to finish he might go and fight Canelo for massive money you don't know if he, if he pulls the win off he's set for life if he don't He's, he's going to get another big fight after and he's near enough going to be set for life after the Canelo fight anyway. Mm. So it's mad. It's like, it's a weird thing is when you're a boxer and young boxer, you're always in a rush. And now I think big advice Tony sort of said to me since I came back from COVID and he's like, Ted, you're young. You've learned a lot. You've had a lot of hard and um, like big fights. Take it always experience and learn. You're still young. You're still 24. You've got plenty of years left. He said, and don't rush, enjoy it. Just enjoy this sport now. <coughs> and if you enjoy it, it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. And I'll be truthful, through this camp, like I said, there's run triangle. Like we do different runs Tuesdays and Thursdays, like as a group as in in the gym. Like early morning. And every camp, like, I always hate the triangle run. Like just like different runs suit different people's legs. And this camp, like I've been doing it sort of, not easy, but I've been getting through and it ain't been, but like usually before I'd need two or three days mentally, I'd be sitting in bed and I'd be like, oh, I really wish I, why did I choose boxing? Do you know what I mean? Why, why did I do this? That I've got to put my body through that rubbish again tomorrow. But now I'm getting through it and I'm trying to enjoy it a bit more. And although now we're getting to the last two and a half weeks and it's starting to feel like, oh bloody hell, I've been training for ages now for really hard. It always happens, do you know what I mean? It's just, the eagerness is coming down lower on the weight. You know, you, um, things are getting different. It's a bit more brutal, the training, the rounds are longer. So it, it's just that always the last couple of weeks, it always feels like that. But it's just, you got to get through that, um, get to find that, and hopefully all the hard work you put in, you reap rewards. Definitely. Yeah. It, uh, as you were talking, I didn't want to stop you because yeah. I, like, yeah, no, I, I was embedded in what you're saying, but there's loads of little points I wanted to sort of yeah, uh, pick at pigeonhole down yeah. so I'll try and remember and, and go back to a few of them but yeah. so I again not a, I'm not a pro I've had a few amateur fights and I started fighting for the Queensbury League yeah. and I had my last one back in 2013 and I lost it yeah. and probably like you I would never ever go out with a loss I need to yeah. need to come back and have, yeah. have, have another fight at least yeah. so last year I came back out like after six years to have, yeah. to have, to have a fight on the uh, Queensbury League and this is what I was going to say to you so I train it a lot anyway. I enjoy boxing. It's, yeah. it's just part of my routine. I love sparring. I love doing the weights. I love doing the, not so much the running, but like some of the explosive sprint work. Yeah. What I forgot is two weeks, three to two weeks away from the fight, yeah. that nervous energy setting yeah. in. And I thought to myself, fuck me, I forgot about yeah. this feeling because yeah. you can train, you can do all the sparring you want, but what you don't, what you forget, your, your mind and your anxiety almost go through. Yeah. Eve. Even though I feel like I'm, I can, I'm quite level-headed. Yeah. I, f I felt it creeping in, yeah. in at night, and I was thinking about it close and closer to the fight. How do yeah. you deal with that? Or what advice can you give to anyone, <sighs> even if they're not a fighter, but yeah. they've got a big moment in their life and yeah. they're thinking, "Jesus, this is getting a bit much." Yeah. How would, at what techniques or what kind of things can you give to people? I think you've got to just relax, but it's hard, no matter what. I don't care when I says like the last couple of weeks, you get snappy. Do you know what I mean? Not like people. <laughs> That after yeah. the fight, once you've been eating everything that you want to eat, you do what you want, you'll be around them and they'll be the funniest people in the world. You love being around them. 
But now a couple of weeks before, you just sit around and they say certain things, you're like, oh, please. Like, what am I doing? Like, what are you want about? Like, what's that rubbish? That's just rubbish, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But usually, you just let them say whatever they want to say, crack on, but it's just you get snappy. But you've got to try and deal with it the, the best you can. And obviously, like I say, like, nah, I'm resting a lot more. I'm not putting myself in them situations where, and like, where I'm around so many people that there could be a point where someone's had a couple of boozers or something and they drive me mad. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of keep myself to myself, do my training, stay around positive people uh, and people sort of pushing for the same goal as me. And uh, I, I, so, um, I should have said this before, but I run sales teams, yeah. right? And the connection between athletes and salespeople, business people, but specifically boxers to salespeople, yeah. I can tell you this, yeah. they're so similar. Yeah. Because I do telephone sales, right? So yeah. it's either you and the other person on the phone. Yeah, it's cool. not like a, a rugby team or yeah. a football team where you can leverage other people. It's yeah. just you and the other person. Yeah, the so all on you. you either make a sale, you don't make a sale. Yeah. You either win that fight, you don't win the fight. Yeah. And you can look good off the phone and you can look good outside of the ring but the moment you get in yeah. that's when you get found out whether you've done the work or not yeah and i talked to, to all, all the all the sales people about what you do outside of the sales environment is going to dictate how much money or how successful you're going to be later on in life yeah. the people that you've got around you are either going to i've done a podcast on this they either radiate you which yeah. bring you up or they're drain they'll suck you yeah. of your energy yeah do you find that in, in boxing in your yeah, camp? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Listen, if you're around people who are cheating, um, training, and um, they don't live a similar life to you, so they can get on, they can go out, they can have a booze, they can. Do you know what I mean? And it's even little things like before, if someone would ring me or message me and be like, "Ah, oh, you fancy popping here for a few hours?" And I'd think, you know what? I'm not going to booze. I'm not going to be out late. It's all right for a couple of hours. Do you know what I mean? But you're putting yourself in the environment, dragging yourself about these places. It's just wasting energy and unneeded energy. And you're being around people where you could get led. So if you're out of that situation, there's not a possibility of that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So uh, obviously, like you said, I do believe if you're around positive people who are pushing for that, got the same similar goals to you, yeah. even whether it ain't the same as sport, whether it's business, whether it's whatever they're doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, studying or whatever. If you're pushing and aiming to reach a goal, you're better to be around them people than someone who's just getting by. They're happy with their life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the, it's hard, I think. Obviously, you can be happy with your life, but it's hard to be content with your life. I think, at my age anyway, I feel that it's very hard to be so content with your life because you're always striving especially with social media and tv and stuff it's like you always want more and obviously listen I, what i've said about the boxing is like with me i'm never going to sell myself short but my main aim out of boxing is if someone said to me in 10 years time what do you want to achieve from boxing go as far as you can or earn as much money as you can and for me it is purely and i'm not lying because i'm on camera it's purely go as far as I can because yeah. people don't realise <clears throat> mental stress and thing you know like of a year and then you see on Twitter and Instagram or even just going in a pub where you know everyone and someone you don't really like but you say hello to and you speak to and they might come over and say, oh, you're doing well with boxing. But like you can see they're sort of, like they're happy to see you. You know like where you've not been being as successful, successful as what you've been. So they're happy to see you. They go, ah, oh, you're yeah. right, mate. They're a bit snakeish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, he's unlucky there, weren't you? Like, but they're not being unlucky as in, you was unlucky, I hope you do better. They're Genuinely being unlucky sincere. as in, like, thinking, yes, good. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy that yeah, you've yeah, been yeah. unlucky and I'm glad I can sort of say it to you. It's so, underhanded dicks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's one of the most helpful things that I've had. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, I know, I don't care what um, most people say, but I know for what I've obviously come through the last year and a half, I know I'm very mentally strong. And obviously at the start of lockdown, like I've said to a lot of people, i said to my family, I said, you know what? If I'm not fighting to do that in 21, I've got a young family. Do you know what I mean? Um, boxing ain't everything, I said. 
I said like, I got around a living. I, I said, I'm gonna retire. You know what I mean? Everyone's on me like, you can't retire, you can't do this shit. I said, yeah, but what am I meant to do? What do I sit around not earning nothing from October of 2019 to 2021? How can I do it? Like, you can't do it, it's not possible. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you got to... And then I'm thinking like, look, I've just trained a big camp for an eight-rounder where I weren't going to get loads of money. It was sort of just a warm-up fight to get a win, to push back on, to go and get another big fight. And a week before that, I've trained and invested in myself and pushed hard in the camp. So then I've lost a load, another load of money. Plus, I'm not full. Although now I look back at it is it purely timing of I invested in myself and I learned a lot from that period. But when you went into COVID at the start, not knowing what the outcome can be, like it was a bit like, bloody hell, I've invested a load in myself. Although I've learned, when am I going to get to sort of show what I've learned or perform, do you know what I mean? Because as much as you learn, as much as you train, the main thing is performing. If you're a real fighter, you love performing. Like if someone said to me, you can click a button, you never have to train again, but you can fight, but we can click a button, get you to this thing. I would never train again. I just want to fight, fight, fight. Because mm. we're fighters, I love fighting. Yeah. I love training, it, I think anyone who really says they really love training, ain't training hard enough. The, like, the, the, the part I... I love about the boxing training yeah. is the sparring. Yeah, it's yeah. my favourite thing. Yeah, cool shit. I don't really like pads. I yeah. don't really like the bag that yeah. much. I even done it this morning. Yeah. You have to do it because it's yeah, part cool of it. But cool the sparring shit. is the best because yeah. if you pull off a move or you spar someone that is better than you, but somehow you've sort of held your own or you've yeah. actually might, might have turned them over a couple yeah. of rounds, that feeling is better than anything yeah, because, else out there. Because you're seeing what you've learned yeah. from the pads, from the bags. It's hard. If you keep continuing every day, like you're coming in and doing pads, listen, you can do that combo a million times right on the pads. Yeah. All of a sudden, you get in your first round sparring, do, do five or six rounds sparring, try that combo a hundred times, it does not work once. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if you keep sparring, keep sparring, keep doing it, it's going to work in the end. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But you'll never get to know how well you'll be able to do it unless you do try it in sparring. And like, that's what I'm saying. As soon as in the lockdown, I was thinking about it, and I was, and I was like, I was thinking, bloody hell, what do I do? Because it's a hard thing to pull away from sport, being a sports athlete. And I know now, even just thinking about for the little short period of time, how I was feeling, it's going to be a hard, obviously, for any sports athlete in any sport to retire. I think it's a hard feeling, you know what I mean? Because mm. you can drink as many drinks you want, you can take as many drugs as you want, you can do anything you want. You've travelled the world, yeah. but the reality but is... that adrenaline yeah. you get from mm. um, a fight or you're doing your sport, like yeah. competing, is a bigger buzz than all of them. Do you know what I mean? No matter what you say, I know that buzz. And that's what you're doing. You're feeling a whole. Do you know what I mean? And that's why so many sports people and actors and thing, but people in performance stuff always become addicts after. Do you know what I mean? Because they start drinking, because they get a buzz from it then that fills that hole what they was having a buzz all the time. They, they take drugs, they, do you know what I mean? It's, it's a weird thing, so it's hard to sort of leave a sport. Yeah? And I, I look back and I look, my last win is October 2018. Yeah. Although, listen, I believe I beat Kieran Conway when they give it a draw and I beat Scott Fitzgerald, like you say, but on paper, since my baby's been born, I've never had a win, do you know what I mean? It's a weird thing for me, like I thought, bloody hell. Imagine when he goes to school. Like, I always look at things like, I'm, I'm a bit mad. I, I always overthink things. And I think, ah, oh, when he goes to school, you don't want your kid to be bullied. You don't. But then, obviously, you look at things, what they got opportunities of. And I think, maybe, listen, if you went to school, you say you get seven, eight, you have a load of kids in school, their dad's saying, ah, oh, this kid's dad used to be a boxer. Rah, rah, rah. Then all of a sudden, they go, ah, oh, yeah. He was a good boxer for a little while, but he's rubbish in the end. Uh, he lost it. He, he ruined it all. Do you know what I mean? Uh, chucked it all down the drain, and he could never do nothing. And I, that's why I've got so much drive, because I just want to win that title. Even if I retired after that fight, and I don't have that feeling, but no, like, just to say, mm. while he was born, I achieved something in boxing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll go back two years. Purpose. Yeah, it go back two years before now before when I was on my high and I, everything was going perfectly, even though my head weren't still in the right place, things just didn't, hadn't fallen yet, do you know what I mean? 
I was 2018, I was a uh, young Southern Area Boxer of the Year, being like 22 or 23, uh, 22 years old, I topped the O2 Arena, even though I lost and I was in the worst mental place I've ever been in. I still now can say, as a 23 year old, I topped the O2 Arena, not the O2 Indigo, not like yeah. the O2 Arena, yeah, the amazing. stone throw where I've grown, away, grown up from. No matter whether you win or lose, it's a massive achievement, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, to say, you know, like you go for a meal in a restaurant and everyone's queuing up to go and watch UFC or to go and watch Beyonce sing. And like, my, I know now for the rest of my life, my kid can say, ah, oh, my dad uh, was the main event there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a incredible. great thing. It's mad and it's hard. Do you know what I mean? When you get kids, it, it does become hard and it's, it's a mental game. It is a really, I think my hardest part of the sport, I can train hard. I can, uh, I know I'm talented. I know I've got a good boxing IQ, whether it's coming forward or on the back. My main thing is being mentally right. If I'm mentally right, like I said earlier, I, I know I'm confident. Listen, I know I can blitz Sam again, mm. but if I'm mentally right, and yeah. if I don't let my head go, yeah. do you know what I mean? But obviously you never know until the night, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like everything in camp's going great, um, performing well, inspiring, and like you say, you don't know until you're in there that night, but I just believe I'm a better fighter than him. I believe, like better all-round fighter, I believe I'm in the best physical shape. I don't, I like, Everyone says at every camp, I'm in the best physical shape, I'm the best this, I'm best. But I can honestly say I'm not lying. And if someone says to me, oh, you got beat, okay, I weren't good enough. But if I, when I win, I know that I was unbelievable shape. Um, I'm mentally right. And if I can do that after this fight, if I can go and be successful, beat uh, Sam Eggert and put on a big performance, and I can then carry on and do that after this fight, my story then goes on. And it comes to a lot better ending than it did if I give up. Do you know what I mean? If if I just chuck the talent and I'm going, ah, I know no, I ain't going my way, bang. I know there was obviously a point, um, you know, after the Scott fight where, yeah. where you know, obviously I saw, read a couple of things and like things that wasn't going so so well mentally. Yeah. I mean, not that I want to uncover that, but yeah. like what, what actually happened in that, in that moment in your life? Because so, it seems like yeah. you were like, yeah. maybe going to stop fighting and there was all there was all things I read about like the gambling and stuff yeah. but then look part of my my podcast is called the Stephen Sully study I like yeah. to study successful people yeah, and cool. part of the studying is looking at your successes but also the adversity but how that person's overcome it yeah cool so that is part of the reason why I've asked that question yeah um the thing with me is when I was in my bad point was February you know what I mean obviously it's, it's public knowledge, everyone knows. I, I attended Sporting Chance. I got over, I, I, I sorted myself out. I'm now over, uh, from April the 6th, 2019, I've not had one bet. I've been clean since then. And at the start, people don't realise it's it's not an easy thing to just overcome. Like When people say you have drugs, um, and you, come, you, have, you become cold turkey. When you have alcohol, you become cold turkey. You know, but the thing is, even if you are successful, and you do become an alcoholic or drug addict, you're not gonna waste crazy money and hit rock bottom if you manage someone gets hold of you and deals with it. But obviously, I've gone from being rock bottom to <coughs> training hard, getting my head right, even though I have to sort myself out, go and, go and rehab, sort myself out. In that time, being in a sporting rehab, being able to train, being able to have all the right physiotherapy and everything and get my head in the right place, but it don't happen overnight, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's a process. Yeah, it's a process. It don't obviously listen like people say the first ninety days are the hardest, whatever. Once you come, but then still six months later, you're still waking up three, four in the morning um, after dreaming that you've been getting in the bookies doing five or six grand on a roulette and thinking, waking up thinking, bloody hell, is that real? Like, and then you realise that it's a dream, and you think, bloody hell, thank God, I've been doing so well, yeah. I ain't broke. Do you know what I mean? And you have that for time and time and time again, do you know what I mean? And you're still not in the right mental state. You're still battling a recovery, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You're still recovering, so yeah. it's still a battle. But then to be training as an elite athlete, not just like doing a four or six rounder, to be training to defend your British title over 12 rounds against elite other elite fighters, not just uh, fights to walk over and just be an easy win. It's hard because you... As much as you're getting yourself in the right mental state from recovering from gambling, you're getting yourself in the right mental state to be prepared for a, a massive fight, a massive event, 
So you're like, you're, there's a lot of things you're overcoming and doing. And to do it and be successful and then feel you've been hard done by is like another, again, another process. So I'm not a delusional fighter, do you know what I mean? I, I know I lost against Sergio Garcia because I punished myself. I put my head out there, let myself get hit. I never tried plan B or C because I just weren't in the ring. My body was in the ring, but my head weren't. I was thinking about what I've done, whether I walked back to the changing room, cried my eyes out, told Tony, like my coach, and told him everything, the truth, admitted it all. And from there, it was the best day of my life, really, because as much as it's the worst performance I ever put on, that was the day, the first day that I got help and started the process to beginning to get help to change my life around. Yeah. And it did. Do you know what I mean? And it must have been like a weight off your shoulders yeah. the moment you went right, you yeah, know, and said it. Yeah, because obviously he was saying like, "Why didn't you tell me before?" And obviously, look, as an addict, as long as you can hide it for, and you're still getting by and do, like, I'm, I thought it's in your byfield. Yeah, most of my purse had been spent before the fight, but I still managed to mentally sort of bring myself in there, be fit enough beat him because then I thought alright then I've got another big payday after that so it's alright I've still got sponsorships I'm still be able to get by yeah. do you know what I mean it's, it's like a conveyor belt do you know what I mean and all of a sudden bang Sergio Garcia the conveyor belt what I, I think in my head could this be stopping do you know what I mean and then you want help then you admit to all the people who have told you in the past you've got a problem and shut up it's my money I'll do what I want don't tell me what to do yeah. and it's my life, I'll get on with it, I've earned my money. Now, nah, it's sort of, it's your time to go, all right, I'm stupid, it's me, let's deal with it. It's like a reality I mean? check yeah, almost. Yeah, 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 do you know what I mean? As much as you try and tell yourself and everyone, it ain't a problem, if you want to stop, you can stop. It ain't, do you know what I mean? It is, and if you ever feel like that, anyone watching or whatever, you know, just realise you have a problem and, and deal with it as quick as possible, do you know what I mean? But... And this goes back to having good people around you yeah. because true friends will let you know and yeah. people that don't really want you to do so well, they'll just let you carry on. Yeah, of course. And this is what I'm saying. So when you go through that battle of recovering and getting yourself right for a big fight and then you get given a draw when you feel in your head you've clearly won a lot of... 90% of the crowd and everyone and the people around it, the promoters, my coaches... Uh, his coaches, the fighter himself admits to after the fight, I thought you won that. It's like you think, bloody hell, what do I have to do? Then you sort of think about it all, want to get rid of it again, have resentment, <coughs> but then manage to bring yourself around, do it all again, still while you're recovering, still while you're um, even an even bigger fight. That I mean, then go and put on one of your best performances as a professional boxer, and then they give it against you clearly. You know what I mean? It's like, all of a sudden, your head is in this point of, what do I have to do right? Like, what, like, what do I have to do to, mm. to, do, to do it? You know? It's like, if I let them beat me, like, I would have given up by now, but I ain't let them beat me, and that's why now I believe I've pushed on hard, I've had a lot of time to learn and, and use my experience I've picked up in all these fights, and I just feel, that's why I'm so excited to get rid of a few demons, um, prove a few people wrong and go and get a massive win on, on the 1st of August. And I think one of the big things of it is I do, I love big events, you know what I mean? As a fighter, as a sports person, I love the pressure, I love big events. And as much as a lot of people believe I'm going to win, a lot of people believe I'm washed up and things, are, and as much as you even explain and you do interviews, as much as I didn't want to do um, at the start, and obviously once it come out, it, it's a thing of uh, it's general knowledge, so now I don't mind talking, but as much as some people, are, and a lot of people do understand, or have had family members or friends or whatever, so they understand, a lot of people still in their head just believe it's like a sob story, and they don't realise what mental effect it has on you because they put on a bet every Saturday and Sunday. They might do 100 quid every weekend and they lose, but it don't bother them. If they win, they it, win. It's, it's, but it's a bit like almost like, you know, a couple of people go down the pub, they have yeah. a few drinks, they get yeah. a bit of lag in and yeah. then they go home. And then when they see someone that goes a bit overboard, they, yeah. they think they're, they're weak in some ways. Yeah. Well, the reality is we've all got different thresholds, yeah. you know, in diff, different things. Yes. And like you said, we've all got addictions. It's just 
the addiction might be in drugs, drink, gambling, it might be in sport, it might yeah. be in this and that. Business, You anything. know, everyone's got diff different yeah. limits to their self. Yeah, and, cool. and sometimes we find ourselves in a position where we didn't realise we're quite vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had my demons as well, you know, yeah, I'm 34 years of age. But again, it's about overcoming it, recognising it, yeah. overcoming it, not being yeah. too proud as an out, a, a kind of alpha male and, and yeah. then kind of, kind of moving on from them. The thing that you said earlier, which I wanted to pick up on, is about investing into yourself. Yeah. I know it's a bit of a, um, people talk about that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. I watch, read, and try and immerse myself in a lot of personal development. I love yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah. And I watched, I watched an interview with him and Conor McGregor. Conor yeah. McGregor, obviously a fighter, so I just enjoy like listening yeah. to that mindset. Yeah. And he said, after the Mayweather fight, and I think the Khabib fight, which he, which he lost, he made a ton of money. Yeah. And he was buying the Lambos, the watches, and all that kind of stuff, which obviously everyone will probably buy. But yeah. He watched an interview with Kobe, not Kobe Bryant, one of the top basketball players, yeah. you know, about a year or so ago. And he said, he, the, the basketball player was saying he invests three million a year into nutrition. Yeah. And he was thinking to himself, I'm spending three million a year on toys, yeah, yeah. but I should be putting it back into my so, body. Yeah. So the question I wanted to come back to you on is, how important is it to invest back into yourself, whether it is nutrition, you know, personal development, sports massages, yeah. the right trainer, or just, you know, just, just becoming a better version of you. How important yeah. is that? I think it's one of the most important things, you know what I mean? As a fighter, as any sportsman, to invest in yourself because training camps and things are brutal, do you know what I mean? So if you're not getting them up, uh, say you're not getting the right therapy, there's going to be niggles you're going to pick up, there's injuries you're going to pick up. And as much as I went through my problems, again, like I say, <clears throat> I was training through niggles and fighting through niggles. But I never ever wanted to sort them, sort them out. I just wanted to, okay, let's get through. Let's have a quarter zone. Let's do this. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Let's just get through. Do you know what I mean? And instead of investing in myself and thinking, okay, all right, maybe we shouldn't take this fight. Maybe you should have two or three months off rehabbing. Do you know what I mean? An injury or... but. Everything's in fast forward. Do you know what I mean? Everything's in fast forward. But I think as an athlete, you need to invest in yourself. Even sometimes before when I was put like, even buying an app, like now I'm on this app with Tony and that, even buying that, it's like £48 for the year. But before you'd think, oh, I ain't paying £48 for an app, it's a waste of money. Do you know what I mean? But the next minute, you'll go and waste that on anything. Do you know what I mean? What? But now I know Tony's watching that app. I can't cheat on runs. I can't. You're accountable. Do yeah, do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm accountable. So I know, even when it comes to after a fight, say you're tired in the 12th round and he goes, oh, well, have you been doing your running properly? Okay, Tony, you got the Strava. You look, have I been doing my running properly? Do you know what I mean? It, like, you can see it. So even just a little thing like that, it don't have to even be money wise. Yeah? Sitting and, and, like I'm saying, resting. Yeah? instead of being on the ball or on the move all the time do you know what I mean just relaxing yeah. that's investing in yourself do you know what I mean is, yeah. is you're, you're relaxing you're resting and that's one of the main things recovery and resting makes an athlete be able to give the best output he can in training sessions do you yeah. know what I mean and me coming home relaxing and not um, running about all day driving about places seeing people makes me be able to relax gives myself time to sit and uh, rest and think before I go for my run. Instead of before it was thinking, oh, do I really want to go for a run? I've left it late, I've done this, I'm tired, I'm knackered. Now it's okay, having tactics for everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, if you can't, it like certain days, like I, I know you've got certain training sessions, you've got sort of a schedule. So I can go, all right, I can fit my uh, massage in on this day in the week. And before, like now, nah, every Saturday, like most days, most weeks now, well, every week really, I have a massage Tuesday evening and Saturday morning, yeah? But I'm booked in every Saturday morning at half eight. But before, I think, am I getting up at half eight? Because I've had an hour training session, our training week, and I'm not going out having a booze. I might sit on the Xbox till two or three in the morning. I can have a lay-in on Saturday. No, I, I don't want to be up till 2, 3 in the morning. I still want to be getting in bed at 10 on a Friday night to be up nice and early, fresh. Even if I'm up well earlier than 8.30, it, it's better to have that routine and get yourself in that routine 
then you're solid all round, you know what I mean? Your rest right, your routine of your sleep's right, your routine of what times you're eating's right. Is is you like you're putting off regardless whether you're like people believe in law of attraction, God or whatever, you're yeah. putting the signals out to the universe saying, I really want this. Yeah. yeah. I really want to fucking yeah, be the best I can be. Of course. Hundred percent. And listen, I I look at boxing and I'm a young man, I'm twenty four and I've had listen, I'm very experienced for how, how many fights I've had and how old I am and I believe look I still believe I can go all the way if I didn't believe I could go all the way I'll retire the day I don't think I can go all the way I will retire and I feel like everyone will see now I've had, I've had that period of time look like it's like it's going to be a, nearly a year and a half yeah I've had yeah so I've had that period of time to recover and get my head in the right place and refresh plus having lockdown like I said and I'm just like I'm fully rejuvenated and refreshed mentally and I just feel like I'm pushing towards my goal better than I ever have do you know what I mean yeah and that's through you no know, like when sometimes you sit there and you think to yourself you think god bloody hell if I could go back to 16 I'd, and have my knowledge I'd have so much better a life do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. But getting this fight, it's like that saying, if I can go back to that big fight, have a training camp, have a time and be ready, um, I would. But it sort of happened for me. Yeah. I've got back to the level I need to be. Yeah, it's the level of fight. If I win this fight, 2019 is forgotten about. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's, a, nah, it's a great pickup story. Ted Cheeseman recovered from gambling addict, addiction got over losses, now gone on push on, and now he's uh, pushing for it to go push and get eliminated for the IBF world title and push for the IBF that route. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's a great story. And well, you know, as we were, as we've seen with someone like uh, Tyson Fury, yeah, I mean, people love that comeback yes. story. Yeah, they get on the yeah. back of it, and that's what you need sometimes. And I think you just need that bit of support and that bit of backing. And I think by winning this fight, I will get that. Yeah. And I'll get that belief again. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, like I said, it was saying about a minute ago, a lot of people still don't know whether it's a sub story or whether it's the truth and my mentally weren't there. Was he good enough? Was he not good enough? Was he mentally gone and he is good enough and now he's mentally right? Is he going to be good enough? And now everyone's getting their chance to see it on 1st of August because I feel, like I said, I feel mentally right. I feel physically right. And... I don't think I can be in better shape than what I am in. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I know we spoke about investing into yourself and I was going to ask you about, like, your, let's say, your goals yeah. in boxing but then beyond boxing. Yeah. I interviewed a few a few footballers and one I always go back to was a really good interview with Anton Ferdinand yeah. and I spoke, spoke to him and he said that there isn't enough in football back then, maybe now, but yeah. not back then when he was like coming up that they were given the footballers financial education. Yeah. So I, I always like to ask any athlete, obviously this is your career, this yeah, is your job. Do they, do they, do you get like enough help where they say, right, you're gonna earn this money going, going through these stages, these levels, this is what you should be investing into or you left your own devices and what, what, how do you see yourself like, let's say transitioning into other careers or other things, making money after boxing? Like yeah. what, what is that long-term plan um, or goal? Right now, for the last six months, I, I've started a, a building company <coughs> and it's, it's been doing well. It's kept me through, going well, obviously through lockdown and everything, everyone, a lot of people are maintaining their houses instead of buying or selling. So it's been busy, it's been keeping me well. And obviously, like you say, there ain't, that specifically, but it depends who you're with, what team you're with. And, and with our coach and our, like with Tony, he sort of always says to us, look, don't waste your money. You should try and save your money from your fights, live off your sponsorships. And then every time you get money and you've got enough money, invest, buy a house. Do you know what I mean? Obviously bricks and water and all that rubbish. Ahara Davis is, is with uh, same training. It was with Tony, but yeah. he left. So, so I, I interviewed O'Hara, uh, yeah. O'Hara, and he, he was saying the same thing. Tony yeah. was saying to him all the time, and make sure you put your money in property. Yeah, make sure you put your money in property. Which I think is good yeah. advice. You'll get a good income, obviously, over years, and it's always going to go up. And obviously, as a young pro, you're always thinking, yeah, whatever. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But yeah. now, nah, obviously, it's true. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously, I've got nice, I feel like I've got a nice property. I've done it well, renovated it well. 
Um, yeah, you've got a lovely house. Yeah, and the more and more you can get, it's better. I, like, I don't look here now and sit here and think, oh, I've got a lovely house, I'm done. I'm, I want, I'm looking at, in the future, I want a nice like five bedroom house. Hopefully I'll have more kids, so I'll need more space. And then, then maybe be settled, you know what I mean? A bigger garden, whatever. Yeah. But like, obviously, like you say, it's goals. And I, you don't want to stand still. And as a sportsman, it, it's hard ever to sort of have that mind to stand still. <laughs> and I just believe like, if I, say by the end of the year, if I can manage to get myself another property and still have money to be comfortable, and then by the start of next year, before obviously March, the same duty thing, I managed to get another um, property. Like that's my aim. My aim from now to then to March would be to get myself another two properties. Yeah. But look, is it realistic? It can be. Is there other things that are going to be in the way that you might might um, make it not happen? Maybe. But you just sort of have to like roll with the punches. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You got to see what happens. But obviously you have to have goals to try and achieve them. And I think with my building company, look, I'm not really that hands-on, I'm the director, I've got workers and um, tradesmen that do the stuff and I take a few phone calls and write a few emails, but it's only gonna build, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, like, like I invest in myself in boxing, I invest in people um, doing leaflets, I'm on com- uh, <coughs> websites like <coughs> Check a Trade, Trust a Trader, so, Everything again is time, and say I retire at thirty, just on a pin, like thingy age thirty. In six years' time, maybe that business might have built and be a massive company. Right then, I might have a load of different vans and yeah, mo- like. But obviously, I'm not one of these boxers that's stuck in boxing. I've always had a financial mind. You know what I mean? That's why I say now, nah, my goal out of boxing is not money. It's uh, fulfilling my potential because that's my that will be my regret my yeah. regret won't be earning enough money out of it my regret will be saying I should have done this I should have achieved this and I never because say like I said uh, say I did retire at 30 a lot of people die around like 80 between 70 and 90 you've got another 40 to 60 years of your life to go and earn whatever money you want to earn yeah. you know what I mean yeah. so if you can do okay and get a good start from boxing, there's plenty of other opportunities yeah. to be able to, as long as you're investing your money wisely while you're boxing <coughs> and you're thinking of other opportunities to move yeah. into after boxing. Yeah, well, I mean, sort of the irony is, I feel that any career, yeah. including boxing and also the, the sales game I've come from, if you focus too much on the money, yeah. You may earn it, yeah. but you might actually push it away. Yeah. But if you focus on becoming, and again, it's a bit cliche, but the best version of you yeah. and and reaching your full potential, the money just comes anyway. Yeah, 100%. So like, let's just say, I know you're not thinking about it now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I want to see you become world champion. Yeah. But let's say beyond that, where do you, where does Ted Cheese, obviously you're going to have a bigger family probably, yeah. but where do you see yourself like, as far as a career is concerned, is it in the building game? Is it staying within sports somehow? What, what, how do you see, see your life planning out? Like, it's hard because it's, it's all opportunities. Obviously, listen, if you become world champion and whatever, you might get a massive contract off Sky being a pundit or, and, but sort of, in my, my head, I like a bit of freedom. I like the time and to sort of pick my own times. As much as you got a routine with boxing, you got a lot of free time. So yeah, yeah. You, you can sort of choose a lot what you want to do. And, I think like having a building company, you do have stress sometimes, but if you're not so hands-on and you've got trade, it's more phone calls and emails, like I said. So in my long-term goal is is to like in, like you don't know if it ever gonna happen, but my long-term goal is to have a portfolio of properties. Making you an income. Making me an income, but pushing for the, the sort of like, not like the bed sit properties. Yeah. No, like, so having a lot of properties where I'm having like four or five tenants. Yeah, I've got a HMOs. Yeah, ha- yeah, yeah. Ha- yeah I've HMOs. got them in Gillingham. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's my long term goal is to have <laughs> properties I renovate and properties that I turn into HMOs. Obviously, yeah. some properties, if you buy them really run down, to renovate and get a profit off them. Yeah. Some properties. Like flipping them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some properties where you'll buy them where they're. It's the right money, but they're standardly done up. Yep. And sort of make them basic and HMO them. You yeah. Know what I mean, so 
that is my long term goal. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, building company, I do what I do want to go far with it and push on with it because it's, it's easier than boxing. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, it's still stressful, but it's easier physically. Yeah, than it's, boxing. It's different kind of challenge. Yeah, yeah. different kind of pressures. Yeah, yeah. And, and that that's my long term goal. Do you know what I mean? And it's enjoyable because again, like you say the hours you put in with the building game and as much as you invest in your company is as much you're going to get at. Yeah. If you are a company and you're not on no websites, you're not doing no leaflets, it's very rare you're going to get work. If you're on the right building companies, you're getting people doing leaflets all the time in different yeah. places. You're having to spend money, you're having to be a bit of output. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully in the future, you're going to get tenfold from that. Yeah, yeah. Well, being a pro athlete, being oh. on TV, Sky, obviously yeah. with a massive fight coming up, yeah. now that should rub off on your on your building company because yeah. people are going to see it and say, you know, I want to work, yeah. I want to have this company work alongside me or yeah. for me because, you know, obviously got a, a pro athlete there. Yeah. So like, let's say sort of running this this up then. So like, the fight coming up in two weeks' time, it's a unique one because am I right in saying you're going to be fighting basically in Eddie? Hearns back yeah, garden. It, 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 I think it's Barry's old ass, but which is now Matram headquarters. So it's like the offices. It's massive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like it's a massive place. I've got to say, one of my favourite interviews I've ever listened to, guy who got me involved with podcasting, who's a property tycoon, a guy called Rob yeah. Moore, he's got yeah. a disruptive entrepreneur. He interviewed Barry Hearn, yeah, and I listened to it, and it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I knew that them guys had done well for themselves, but I yeah. didn't realise how, how much. And when yeah. you're saying about the, the headquarters, it's yeah. ginormous yeah, gaff, no, isn't it's, it? It's crazy. It's crazy. And there's buildings off of it. And I mean, what could have maybe in the past been annexes and stuff. Yeah. And there's a swimming pool with a gym. And you know I mean, it's, it's, it's so like, there's a purpose made ring there now. There's no su su supporters or spectators. No, no, crowd, no spectators. Just, just journalists and people. Yeah, so like from Tuesday, the week before, we have to go to the hotel be COVID tested, <coughs> we can't leave our room for 12 hours. Once we find out if we're okay, then we're only allowed to sort of leave our room if we want to go to the gym in the hotel. Yeah, so it's like, like for an hour or something. Yeah. Because my, my trainer is Charlie B, who's part of the boxing boxing booth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adam Booth's yeah, uh, yeah. thing. And uh, he was telling me about it, because yeah. I think Harlan, no, not Harlan, oh, Shannon, I think yeah, it Shannon is. Courtney, yeah, Yeah, I think she was gonna fight or is yeah. fighting or something like that. I think like she's that. fighting on one of the shows, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he was telling me about how sort of regimented it is yeah. when you go there, you can't leave, and Charlie's a fireman, so yeah. like, really difficult for him to yeah. like, commit on staying there. Yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, so what's that, what, like going into that, men like, mentally, obviously you're physically, you know, in top yeah. condition and stuff, yeah. but like going into this, because it's a completely different environment, yeah. is that played in, in any kind of football mental games or not really? It's a fight. Well, really, it's sort of, it's, it's like a guessing game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's one of the things where, like, the guinea pigs, because um, we're the first ones, it ain't like we're the second show or the third show. This could be normal for yeah, a couple you, of years. Yeah, <laughs> like, you can't um, speak to someone who's fought on the show and say, oh, how was it that week? And, do you know what I mean? Like, we're the first people, so people are going to be messaging us and saying, oh, how is it? Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit weird, and you can't really speak on it and judge it until you've done it. It's like you're going into the unknown. So, yeah. And obviously, listen, there's going to be things, it's going to, as much as it sounds very strict at the moment, things can change, like, a lot of things are changing in the society now with the COVID stuff, so maybe it might be a lot less stricter by the time, it's only two weeks, but in two weeks, a lot's been changing in the last couple of previous two weeks. Yeah. So hopefully, it ain't so strict, but if it is, you have to get on with it, and as long as you get to perform, that's the main thing. Yeah. And uh, during your, uh, I know you said about this boxing camp's been really, really good for you. Yeah. Um, in what aspect is it? Because training harder, the diet's been more on point, more rest. Yeah. You know, got better people around you. What, what would you say has been like the strongest element uh, of it? The strongest element is just purely no distractions. Do you know what I mean? Uh, there ain't loads of people at a pub or uh, a restaurant or it, like there's not low. I'm not getting numerous of numbers of calls saying, oh, pop here, we, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that, just come down and pop around. So you're not continually darting this place, that place, this place. Yeah, or and trying which, to come up with an excuse yeah, why you don't. Yeah, you and now yeah. it will become a thing where it's trial and error, obviously, with all of sport, but now I believe I'll be successful in the fight, and I believe now I can take the traits 
I've used in this training camp on from now on with me, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like I don't have to be sidetracked. I don't have to think, oh, well, you can get away with it. You're not doing this. I can just sort of be fully focused. No, nah, like, not like when fighters used to go abroad and do it. You can do it at home, do you know what I mean? You're like, And you can do it at your gym and at home with your family if you're tunnel visioned. Yeah. If you're distracted, like sometimes I think to myself, to be honest, I want it, I could turn my phone off and just forget about it. Obviously, like, it'd be nice, like it's yeah. nice to have a little look on Instagram, Facebook, yeah, yeah. and see what's going on with all the boxing news and boxing write ups and stuff. But, like, it's nice not to have that stress and the uh, pestfulness of people luring you, sort of. And they're not doing it on purpose, they're just being your friends, and they're just being, but they don't understand what you have to do to mm. be an elite athlete. Do you ever get that on like social media where like it's either fans or people that are haters like they send messages to you and then you read it and you're like, oh, that's either been, been really nice or really bad. But is that a bit of a battle as well? Like, Yeah, because listen, I, I'm one of, uh, as you see, like I love a fight and I've got that mentality. And when some people say stuff to me on social media and that, I think, I feel like just texting them and saying, look, yeah, mate, yeah, if you want, off. <laughs> meet me here and yeah. we can talk about it. Yeah. If you really want to, we can talk about it. And sometimes I, I look and see people on social media. If I see some slag me off, I'll look, find their picture, I'll see if I can see a picture of them. And I think, I can't wait to see you out somewhere because I will make you apologise yeah. or, or, or and embarrass you, do you know what yeah. I mean? I will embarrass you the way you're saying this all about me on the internet. But I guarantee... 90% of them people who slag you off on there and they will have dodgy names or they won't have a proper photo will see you on the street or see you at a boxing show or in a shop and say, oh, you're right, Ted. Yeah. Can I have a picture? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's a weird one. Like, uh, some boxing and stuff is it's mad. Like, you'll see, obviously, I, I used to just, just do it and just, I used to love the interviews and stuff. And in the end, I sort of got to a point where I was sick of it and I thought, oh, what am I going to do this for, mate? Like, yeah. It's just wasting my time, you know what I mean? I'm going to speak to him, but now I'm going to have to speak to nine other people after, so I've done 10 interviews. And it's almost and like the same question. Everything questions. is the same question. Yeah. So why couldn't they have just took that one interview and all used it on their Share channel? Share it, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> it's just all part of it. And that's all. And like, again, the last couple of weeks when you're anxious, when you're making weight, it's something you don't want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a couple of weekends ago, as soon as the fight got announced, I had 30 messages of uh, boxing companies and channels. Can you do an interview? Can you do a Zoom? Can you do this? I was thinking, oh, my God. And I kept sort of saying, I'll do it on the weekend. It come that weekend. And I never done it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, ah, I've got to do it. But I've got to find time to be able to have my own time to then be able to do yeah. that. And then one weekend, I said to him, look, just all do it. And I slotted in the time, and I got about 10 ruled mm-hmm. off do you know what I mean like yeah. I needed to do but it's that it's, paradox between yeah. like being a boxer being you but then also trying to build up your own profile yeah, like promote, promote, and, promoting yourself and you don't want to be ignorant or rude but it's hard yeah do you know what I mean like some, you, sometimes you feel like saying to certain people like mate don't you understand like I've just done 10 today and you've told me this you're only going to be 10 minutes and now you've kept me 30 40 minutes do you know what I mean? I'm meant to be here. I, I'm at a restaurant eating and I, I, I'm with my missus and kid and you've kept me on the phone. So my missus and kid, my kid can't cry because she's having to try and stop him crying. Yeah. My missus can't speak and I'm having to do an, an interview. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Just to keep you happy. But you told me 10 minutes. Do you know what I mean? If, if you like people work with you as much as you work with them, it's a lot easier. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But if some people are... Like do it. I think to myself, all right, I'll remember that next time you are, so I won't even bother. Do you know? Yeah, what I, mean? yeah. I, I think you've you've shot yourself in the foot because I ain't gonna do it next time. You, yeah, yeah. You've ruined yourself. But it it's hard, mate. It, it, like you say, it, it's mentally hard. Like when you see their messages, a lot of them, and, and, and Twitter is the world's worst. I think like a lot of people, and I, like as much as it's bad, because uh, the kid's young or whatever. But I think it sent a sign out the other day when that kid I think it's Sterling or Saha the 12 year old got arrested for sending racist yeah, messages yeah, yeah. but I think now nah, it might send a bit of a message out to people that bloody hell they've nicked a 12 year old so they ain't gonna worry about nicking a 30 year old yeah, of a message and yeah. it will ha- maybe now nah, help not so many people be so abusive Cle- clean then, up yeah, clean it up sometimes you sit there and then you think to yourself 
I really want to just reply, what are you doing with your life? Like, what do you do every day? Do you sit there and, and just eat rubbish, sit by the keyboard and, and type loads of rubbish and slagging people off? Or do you actually have a successful job? Are you financially, financially well off? Are, yeah. Have you had a fight? Uh, yeah, are you, yeah. You're rubbish, you're, he can't do this, he should do this. Have you had a fight? You know what I mean, there's loads of things. But you have to hold yourself. Yeah. And obviously that's partly your manager and your team. Otherwise, me, sometimes I would just sit there and go, please, here is my address or here is this address. Meet me here at a time. And if you have really got a problem, we can sort it out then as men. <laughs> but you can't do it. Otherwise, if you writ that on there, all of a sudden, yeah. bang, yeah. you get a phone call either off your manager, your promoter, or, or some, police some, will be at your door. Or journalists or yeah, something. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, I think as well, if you give them that retaliation, that's what, they that's what they're aiming for. Mm. Yeah. And I think the more you don't give them the red attack, like now, before I used to think, ah, oh, just delete it or whatever. But now I'll just purely go block, delete, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. think I can't, I don't want to be involved in it. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to write negative stuff on my stuff, I don't, I can't bother to even no look at it. No point engaging yeah, into there's it. No point, let me just get rid of you and I don't have to see it no more. Um, so I'm very aware that uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. No, no, of course. Yes, sweet. So I'll wait to ask you a couple, just a couple more questions. Um, just about the fight then. I know you're going to win. Yeah. Um, that's no doubt. Yeah. But how do you see it going? Sam's a tough fighter. And I think the hardest thing for me is going to be not loading up because from the first bell of round one, I'm going to be hitting Sam freely because he takes shots to land shots and... It's in any fight, you'll know Sam and seeing Sam fight. He gets hit a lot, you know what I mean? His defence ain't the greatest, but he uses his defence as his offence, you know what I mean? And mm. just tries to throw off, off of that. So my main thing is not loading up, wasting energy when I'm landing my shots, just take my time, keep hitting the shots, accumulative shots, and sooner or later, it's going to hit a hit wall and I'm going to land the, the right shot or whatever and it, it's going to be over, I think. That's how I feel it, it will go. But you don't know to the, the fine night, but that's how I feel it will go. Good, good man. I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to be uh, tuning in. Yeah. Last question. So we, you actually touched on it earlier without even realising. So my kind of catchphrase type thing I have for my podcast is be happy, never content. I yeah. always leave, leave my podcast yeah. on that. I came up with that when I was in sales. Yeah when I was like, like managing teams, yeah. they, I've got my own reason, but if I were to say to you, to give your interpretation of be happy, never content, what do you yeah. think that means to you? I feel that you should always be happy with the position you're in at life, right, and where you are and what you're, you, you're working at, but don't be content with it. Know that there's somewhere higher that you want to be, but you're just at a different time and at another time you want to be pushing for that, but right now you're happy with where you're at because you can't possibly be there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, wicked. Thank you for your time, yeah, uh, Ted. No problem. Uh, Sweet, very, man. very best of luck for, uh, with, with your fight. Thank you for welcoming me into your yeah, home. Man, and, you know, I've got, got to meet your lovely family and uh, yeah, I look forward to, you, to your uh, journey unfolding and uh, yeah, roll on the next fight and then many more to come. Yeah, cheers. Thank Thanks you very much. You. Right, nice cheers, one. Mate. Cheers. cheers. had a fantastic interview interview with uh, Ted Cheeseman he's fighting on the 1st of August against Sam Eggleton um, yeah what a, what a lovely guy I mean to be honest most people I've interviewed especially the uh, the athletes including boxers they've been they've, they've been so professional and they've been gentlemen and you know really really nice people and uh, his family lovely family lovely house and it, it, you know it, it's quite a special thing because you know he's so close to his fight he's training a few times a day you know he's trying to spend time with his family he's trying to do let's say the PR side of things and marketing and to welcome me in his home with his family two weeks out from the fight I mean that says a lot a lot about him so I really really appreciated that very very humbling uh, we spoke about all kinds of things from you know boxing mindset the ups and the downs and I think there's a lot of a lot of valuable lessons there. If you're into boxing or not, you can always learn something from an interview. And a fighter has a very very special mindset. And Ted is you know is 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 the epitome of a, of a winner. So um, yeah, look out for this interview. It's going to come out. It's fight week, uh, the Wednesday before. And um, 
leave a comment, leave a review, share it, subscribe. It's going to be on my YouTube as well. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Be happy, never content.